Hello and welcome to our much delayed character creation session. I don't know if anybody's in our Twitch stream, but that's okay. We're kind of making this for posterity's sake for YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, yay, thanks. Uh, if you're watching this on stream, yay, thanks. <laughs> um, we have a little bit of... <laughs> We have had so many technical issues this morning. It's been nuts. Uh, everything is complicated. You know, I'm going to just say that the number of, like, Matthew's power going out, Mike's power going out, this time Claire's computer wouldn't start and is, re like, updating itself, decided that 10 minutes before we were supposed to go live was the perfect time to update. And the last I checked in with her, she was at 25%. So, like, something hates us. <laughs> um, but... It, it's the void. It's it, the void. It's something. <laughs> Maybe we're all cursed. So... Uh, it's cursed boy. Yes. <laughs> we're, cur we're cursed boy. Probably. <laughs> so, we are doing character creation today for At The Gates. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of introduction for what At The Gates is. At The Gates is a uh, the next game in the Earthbane cycle, which is our term for our fantasy games that are all kind of loosely set in the same universe, but at different points in time. Um, no, we are not going to tell you at what point in time At The Gates and World Below are in with one another um everything is cyclical in the earthbane cycle so even if you think you know oh there's hints here that this happened before the world below or there's hints here that this happened after the world below the truth is is that yes in the sense that like it may be either one because everything kind of happens in a cycle um so we're not firmly putting uh, a, a fine point on when these things happen in the, in the Earthbane cycle. So uh, a little bit about At The Gate specifically is my uh, original pitch for this was that I wanted to make a fantasy game in StoryPath Ultra. I had no idea that the world below was being made. I had no idea about the Earthbane cycle, and I sent... A pretty detailed pitch to rich that was like hey what if we did this like epic fantasy game that had like you know warring nations and lots of magic and all this cool stuff and he was like yeah i really like this idea how do you feel about it being part of something that's already like going on and i was like yeah okay i can work with that so uh, very little of my original concept had to change to fit this into that cycle, which is really cool, honestly. Um, and that's kind of how pitches go. Uh, if, if you ever wonder how pitches go, like sometimes it's like, yeah, one off, this is perfect. And sometimes it's like, you know, we're already doing something similar to that. Would you like to be a part of that thing instead of on your own? So here we are. We are making characters for At The Gates, and I have with me right now um, M.K. Anderson. Hello. <laughs> and Michele uh, Milioni, is that right? No, Masala. No, Sala. Man, I have the wrong names. Oh my <laughs> god, I'm so sorry. I did a thing. <laughs> That, I'll never be able to apologize for that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Masala. Okay. Anyway, um, now that I'm embarrassed beyond all belief, let's uh, talk about character creation. <laughs> uh, Claire will be joining us at some point, hopefully. And that will get us a... Um, a little bit of a break because I'm going to have to adjust the cameras when that happens. But Claire will also be joining us and she will be making 
uh, a character also. She just, like I said, we've been having technical issues and we decided not to wait any longer. Okay. So, um, we, for character creation, um, for the players edification or for the listeners edification, uh, the very first thing that I want folks to do is to come up with a character concept. Um, let me give you a little bit of prompting about what's, what this world is and what we are making these characters specifically for, because these characters will end up in some iteration in an ash can, which will be the first introduction that people will have publicly to the uh, to at the gates, and this will include a tiny adventure that is written by MK. Thank you, MK, for uh, your fun little adventure that you wrote. Um, this adventure is set in a small town in Oridonia. Oridonia is a nation that is well. It's 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 not doing very well. None of the nations are doing great, but this one's not doing very hot because of two things. One. It is under the threat of war from their northern, uh, from their northern border, uh, from a nation called Caparanite. Uh, Caparanite is a nation built in a pretty barren tundra, and the only fertile lands they have are to their south, uh, and it's pretty much stuff that they have conquered from bordering nations. And they are looking to take one of the fertile lands that Oridonia has had uh, for a while now so that we can have, so that they can expand their territory. The problem is, is that Oridonia can't afford to lose that fertile land because all the rest of their expansive farmlands have fallen under the effects of a magical blight that has to date, no way to fix it. So that little bit of fertile land that still exists is vital to even remotely keeping the nation fed and alive. Um, so those two things, this magical blight that is affecting everything and the possibility of a northern invasion to take what little bit of food lands they still have is facing Oridonia as two major problems. So you're playing individuals who are in a small town close to that northern border who is, they're dealing with food shortages uh, like everybody else. And so you're being asked to go hunting for animals uh, so that there's at least some game to hopefully, you know, eat now and then also store some for the winter and do what you can. So this adventure is going to be a little exploration of the conflict between uh, Oridonia and Caparanite and the hardships of the blight and the need to figure out how do we how do we make it through. So that all said, Claire just messaged me and said, hey, uh, she's ready. Um, so I'm not going to repeat this story for her, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. So let me let her join. We're going hunting. <laughs> yeah. Right, y'all are going hunting. There's going to be like some looking around, uh, some some surviving the wilderness, uh, and some dealing with either blight or uh, what are called outlands. And outlands are areas where void touches creation, and void is this kind of plane of existence that's antithetical to creation. So when the two combine, they create this warping and twisting of the natural order of life and those are called outlands and outlands are dangerous places because any creatures that are in outlands tend to warp with the void and the other thing that happens is sometimes demons come through 
gates that form in Outlands. Hence the name At the Gates. Please pay no attention to the fact that I, um, I definitely named it the game before I'd made that decision about Gates. <laughs> it's a good name. Yeah. I mean, we perhaps the idea was there, it just wasn't called out as such. Right. Exactly. They had to come from yes. somewhere after all. Yeah, they were just calling them portals and then somebody mm-hmm. was like, Why don't we just call them gates? And I was like, Oh man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um Oh no. What have I done? Oh, I did the thing. Oh no. Okay. Sorry, I thought Claire was coming in, and then she hasn't yet, so. Oh, no. Okay. We're good. We'll we'll see what happens when she shows up, but until then, we are good. Okay, so we're, all four of us are going to make a character today, so let's go ahead and talk about our concepts, Um, and we can talk about that as we... Uh, as we wait for Claire to show up. So, uh, Michele, what is your character concept? Uh, I had this idea for a magic-wielding character mm-hmm. who uh, sort of got uh, uh, struck by a lightning during a sea storm and fell into the waves and sort of got uh, uh, imbued with the magic from the well of creation on that mm-hmm. side of the... Uh, uh, on the side of the setting, and uh, I think that perhaps uh, 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 Tide Weaver or Reforged by the Sea could be a title for uh, this magic character, and so perhaps some water, air, and lightning powers to be so this sort of uh, uh, hello, I am Michele's character and I speak for the waves instead. Right. Then okay, the okay, I, I like that, I like that. Uh, MK, what is your character concept? Uh, I, I, I'm a lot more less creative. I thought uh, I want to be like a native of of the uh, the small village. I figure she's a little bit political, like a little bit, you know, uh, because uh, Ordonia is sort of a republic, a very egalitarian republic, and you know, a bit. Uh, anti caparanite and, uh, you know, a hunter. Mm-hmm. That's sort of my thought. Okay. I mean, that's cool. I like that. And uh, we, got, we just got Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. I don't know if, if Claire can hear us. Because I'm not hearing Claire. I am slowly trying to, I'm going to have to, uh, in a moment, yeah, it like, what a weird way that you do things, OBS, sorry, more technical difficulties, because we haven't had enough already. It's Curse Boy. It must be. You've been hacked. I have been. My brain has been hacked. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, hold on. Why aren't you updating? It's, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Welcome, Claire. <laughs> All right, um, Claire, I still can't hear you. I don't know if you're trying to talk or not. Um, so, or can you hear us? I don't, I don't, I don't know if she can hear us. Um, I think not. she could see us make gestures, but not anything related to sound. Well, <laughs> and now I am. Uh, sorry for these technical issues. I feel like this is just... <laughs> okay, she's working on being able to hear us once she can. 
and we cannot hear her, so she's trying to figure that out. So, okay. She'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> All right, so you're an Oridonian who's a native who isn't a huge fan of Caparanite, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, so let's see. I am going to play a, um, a healer because I know that Clara wants to play kind of a, a more warrior type character. Uh, so I am going to play a, uh, what is called a diviner. And I also want her to be an Oridonian. Um, she's less, I hate Caparanite and more, I hate the blight and I need that to be fixed. So she is going to, you know, be kind of really, she's interested, I think, also in the Outlands and what the Outlands are about. Um, being from Oridonia, they haven't seen a lot of Outlands in Oridonia, but they've heard of them. So now that they are cropping up more because demon summoning is now a thing and they kind of leave Outlands behind them. Uh, she has gotten really kind of very, very interested and decided to go adventuring for the ability to research this phenomenon that she's only ever heard about before. Um, so Claire, can you hear us now? She can hear. I we cannot hear you yet. We cannot. We're getting. But we're ready. making progress. We are making progress. Yes. <laughs> we're all about continuous improval here. Oh. Uh, improval? Imp is that a word? It is improvement. Now. <laughs> it is. Wow, we're all about continuous. We're making it a word. Yes. Hello, Claire. I hear you, Claire. Yay. Yay. Okay. I'm Claire, so sorry about all the technical issues I've been having. No, you're, we have been just, yes, we're fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you heard, we were doing our character concepts for okay. this um, stream. Uh, and just a little brief, this is for the, uh, where these characters are going to be in the Ashcan, and the Ashcan adventure is set in Oridonia close to the Caparanite border. Okay. So, um, but you can play a character from any nation. Um, we just, you know, come up with a reason why you're here kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I believe. Part. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying it was just a big part of why I said it there is it's, it's so cosmopolitan. Anybody could be from, from anywhere. Yep. Absolutely. Go Perfect. For it. Okay, cool. Yeah, after looking over the, the documents, I have an idea for my concept and where she's from. So cool. go ahead and hit us with it. Okay, so I had pictured um, kind of hard, loyal woman who from the uh, uh, frozen waste of the Norse. You said the uh, Comparin border is with is it borders Ordonia? Yes, it does. Well, fantastic. So I'm very nearby. Um, I was well. I didn't have to go quite so far to get to Ordonia is all I'm trying to say. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, that being said, I'd pictured a uh, woman who is kind of lost her way. Like she had like I was reading about how Caparan or Caparan mm -hmm. Capar is Caparan. OK. Yeah. Caparanite and people from Caparanite are Caparans. OK. Fantastic. OK. So from Caparanite, she had sort of like a, a person, a per she had a purpose before. I hadn't quite figured out all the details, but she had like kind of lost her Lord to put it in, you know, uh, Japanese, not Japanese, but to put it in like Japanese tropes. Like mm -hmm. she's a Ronin at this point. Mm -hmm. She kind of lost her way, lost her purpose. And now she's looking for a new one. Uh, and she's good with a blade. She's great, uh, you know, good at handling herself. Okay, cool. I'm, yeah, that's really cool. Excellent. So now we kind of have this concept for all of our characters. And so the next step is we are going to pick 
our heritage. And so we've already kind of done that in defining who our character concept is. Uh, so your heritage is the nation or maybe not nation that you grew up in that influences kind of a lot of your beliefs and, and re religious practices and things like that. So this is kind of the culture that you grew up in. Um, so clearly, uh, MK and I are Ordonian, Claire is Kaparan, and Michele's character is uh, Ivesian. So... I'm putting that down in the spreadsheet. All right, great. Um, each of your heritages have kind of a different cultural path that you might have experienced from that nation. And we did this because, you know, even a nation is not a monolith, right? You, you can see it in the U.S., you can see it everywhere in real life, that just because two people come from the same nation doesn't mean they have the same experiences. So we only have two options in the core book, and we may add more options in supplements. I don't know. Um, but we call them perks. And perks define a little bit about your upbringing and the, the ways that your nation influenced you. So for you, Claire, your options are a stoneborn, which I feel like your, uh, your concept leans to that, uh, or practical magic. So Kaparans are both very uh, spiritual people, and so they have a lot of magical folks who have learned to use magic to kind of help them live in this very harsh environment. And the, and Stoneborn are people who most of Kaparan are very, Kaparans are very strong warriors. Um, even if they're not actually the warrior profession, they are still capable combatants. Everyone is trained how to fight in, in Kaparanite. Uh, so I, up to you, which two you think, which of these two you think is best for you, for your character? Uh, you're definitely right. I went with, uh, Stoneborn. Okay. Um, I just, I, I, I was, uh, excited about practical magic, but like my, my favorite way to break in a new system is like, what's the most fun I can make a character who doesn't act, you know, doesn't interact with magic at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, then, uh, I like that actually. I mean, you will, you do have access to magic. Everyone does, but you can absolutely take a path that uses very little of your magic or only uses your magic in very specific ways. So, uh, great. Uh, for Michele, your options are magic touched which it sounds like you're probably going to go with because you're proximally yes. to the well of creation has influenced you in a way. Um, the other is Saltborn, which is that you, you grew up kind of a working class person on an island. And so everything about island life has influenced you. Um, but uh, well, I think that uh, Saltborn might actually be the perk for my character before they're defining uh, moment where they fell uh, off the ship but uh, i think that after that magic touch is better uh, for the concept i have in mind yeah, I, it's actually quite on point okay great um so and then for ba, 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 got a scroll love scrolling uh for mk and myself we have the option between grassborn, which are people who essentially grew up in the fields, in the farmlands, and innovatives, which are probably people who grew up more in the city um, and have worked on like the very industrious side of uh, Oridonia's lifestyle. Mm. So I think I think my character probably grew up in that village. So I I, I feel like Grassborn 
is is closer to her heritage. Excellent. Um, I think actually my character started in a city and has come out to this village because it, of its closeness to the blight and and Caparnite and maybe you know the idea of being able to see an outland. Um, so I'm going to pick innovative. So each of these perks define a, uh, a bit about your character. And so they give you uh, four dots of attributes uh, split between mental, physical, and social. And then they give you three skills, but you have four skills to choose from. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, hold on. I said that, and now I have to double check. <laughs> you get three dots of skills. Do you have four skills to choose from? Okay. So you don't have to put all those dots. Like, you don't have to split the dots, one, two, three, uh, one and one, one and another, one and another. You could put all three in one single skill if you wanted to. All of those skills essentially count as path skills for you in the future. Okay. So I'm going to have to go through and mark which skills are, are what. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you think that a, a P next to the skill to mark for you, that's a path skill for purposes? Yeah, a, no? a, P, a P works, yeah. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> and while y'all are doing that, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say that my character, as an innovative, ha I have two dots to put into mental, one into physical, and one into social. So uh, as a healer, I think uh, for mental, I'm going to take cunning, and I'm going to go ahead. Everything starts at one dot. All story path ultra attributes all start with one dot already. Um, so I'm actually going to bring cunning up to two and intellect up to two. Um, I'm going to bring dexterity up to two, and then I'm going to bring composure up to two. And then for the skills, uh, the innovatives get artistry, persuasion, science, and technology. Um, I'm going to take artistry, persuasion, and science, because I think she's a little bit of a researcher over an inventor, which I would put with technology. And I'm just going to put one dot into each of those. Um, and then every perk also gives you two um, perk advantages. And these are just, you get them at character creation and they live with you through the rest of your character. Uh, they're usually kind of help define or alter how you interact with specific things. And they are designed to kind of always be useful no matter what level you are or what, how much experience you have. Um, so Innovative has Breakthrough, which is... Uh, I have a passion for a particular area of research, be it esoterica, science, or technology. When I'm trying to solve a problem with my passion, I can use additional hits at the cost per one hit per question to ask the story guide up to two questions about how to solve it, uh, which I'm going to pick science because I'm a scientist uh, kind of character. And then I also have Technobabble, uh, I've got a way of presenting ideas with such conviction that others believe you, regardless if you're being truthful. I gain a plus two enhancement, which will stack with other things when I present my ideas to make others believe me. So, And that should hopefully be enough time uh, for y'all. So can we get a little bit of where we've put our dots from people? Uh, yeah. So for my character, um, I since I chose Stoneborn, I have one mental attribute and three physical attribute dots to play with. Mm -hmm. um, so if they all start at one, then I was thinking of uh, raising my cunning to two, 
And since I've got three dots to work with in my physical, uh, I was going to put one into might to bring that up to two, and two into stamina to bring that up to three to represent kind of like hard living. Yeah, and sounds great. Yeah. And I had a question about the skills. Yes. Um, and I apologize if you already answered this. Um, but it for so for the skills for Stoneborn, it says artistry, leadership, science, and either close combat or ranged combat. Yes. Now, does that mean I can't put a dot into both both combats? Yes. That means that you have to pick at character creation which one is your path skill. Okay. Well, fantastic. And so we had three steel points to work with. Mm -hmm. um, so I was going to put, kind of spread them out a little bit, one into artistry, one into leadership, and one into close combat. I am not a scientist. Good. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> All right. And then my uh, perk advantages, you said they were called? Yes. Okay. I have battle hardened, uh, intensive training and experience running around rocking terra rocky terrain, uh, taught me how to push myself through pain and exhaustion to keep going. I could ignore complications associated with deprived and exhausted status effects while in combat. Which is pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I've also got hot-blooded. Competition drives me in all aspects of life. Uh, once per scene, when my competitive side flares, I get a plus one enhancement on physical actions that stack. And allies with whom I have a bond also gain this enhancement bonus, which also stacks. Yeah. So my my competitive nature makes everybody around me also a little bit more competitive. Yeah, it's which, like a it's like a team sport. Exactly. <laughs> I get I get so hype. Everybody else has to be a little bit more hype. Yes, it's fantastic. All right. Um... MK, Michele, which one of you wants to go? I can go. Uh, okay. So she is, let's see, she's Oridonian. Mm -hmm. And so I had her, um, of course, we did Grassborn, and I gave her comfort food as the perk mm -hmm. for that. Well, you get both uh, of them. I, oh, I get both of them. Yeah, you do. Well, that's awesome. Uh, so I'll, I'll note that down. Uh, I decided to put, um, of course, my path skills or, or, or my my heritage. Uh, I've got artistry, culture, and pers persuasion and science to divide three points among. Mm -hmm. So I put two in culture and one in persuasion because I don't think she's an artist or a scientist. She's, she's you know, a hunter. Okay. That's what she does at this point. Um, as Claire said, we start out with one dot in everything. So for, uh, I get two points to put in physical and two points to put in social. So I raised her dexterity to three because okay. as, as a hunter, she's bendy. Uh, and I put one in presence and one in composure. Perfect. And is there anything else that I, mean I need to... You could explain kind of quickly what comfort food and collaborator do. Sure. Let me look at uh, comfort food. Uh, I have it. If Go, you... Comfort. Okay. Yeah, I've got it. So um, I believe that the happiness of the community is a full belly um, and have learned to stretch resources because, of course, Oridonia is, has, has been dealing with a magical blight for a while. Um, once per session, I can pass along a small stack that grants a plus one enhancement that stacks to my ally, allies next to action. Um, and collaborator, I know how to manage my time and work with others. Um, on a teamwork action, reduce the difficulty by one. And when using a bond enhancement to purchase a teamwork trick, reduce the cost of that trick by one to a minimum of one. Yes. And this game has several teamwork tricks um, that you can use when working with your your bond mates. Because uh, if I hadn't said it already, this game is very heavily inspired by JRPGs and the like 
combo attack or, or combo like movement or oh because you're standing next to your s tier relationship you're getting a bonus is is very much like i wanted to build that into this game so um, yeah yeah and it's i i think Oh, I, I, I was going to say, I, I don't think Claire was here when I said my character doesn't like Capra Knights. My character is. Uh, so it's it's interesting that, that your character is here in Auradonia and and my character is a, is a is a natural kind of collaborator and yours is, is more of a natural type uh, person. Yeah. So it's it's in, it, that's an interesting dynamic that I, I guess we'll get into when we discuss bonds. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right, McKay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do have two dots for mental, which I did put into uh, intellect, mm -hmm. and then one for a physical that I put into dexterity, and one in social that I put into composure. I think that I'm going for the uh, really focused on a magic sort of character that is always uh, a presence in uh, JRPGs after all. And um, as an evasion, I also have esoterica, leadership, persuasion, and science. Uh, I'm not against having a bit of persuasion, but for now I put two dots in esoterica and one in science just to be knowledgeable about the magic and about the word that is in the more natural factual sense. Yeah, it sounds good. Um, then I do have insight. Uh, I have an understanding of how people feel. And uh, if I spend some time in, in uh, social interaction, observing people, or observing uh, a person, I uh, can uh, experience their emotions or see their aura something uh, in that sense and it gives me an uh, announcement mm -hmm. on, on social interaction and then uh, i have second keystone uh magic has taken a root in you in a way you're still trying to understand where other people only have one keystone you can have a second one outside of your prof profession offered pillar so that's gonna be uh we're gonna use that later on I yeah think. absolutely all right, perfect. Um, so then the next thing that we pick, and this may be a little, like, a little more reading, is we pick a uh, an upbringing. So this is sans your nation, sans your culture. This is kind of like, what did your family do? What did you do before you went on and got a profession? Um, you know, were you a noble? Were you uh you know were you a merchant did you you know did you a journeyman with a crafter um did you grow up poor did you were you a farmer did that kind of thing of how did you grow up and what were you kind of doing before you decided to strike out and go get a profession or strike out and start adventuring and this is considered your upbringing um your upbringing is just you pick one. It doesn't have perks. Um, only your... Uh, now I can't even remember uh, what it's called. Only your heritage uh, has perks. So your... Um, oh, no. Your, yeah, your upbringing does have perk abilities, but it's just you don't have to pick between two different things. It's just you pick the thing, you get... You know, if you're an artisan, you get attribute skills and then two abilities. Um, you don't have to pick between two different types of artisans, if that makes sense. Um, so do y'all have ideas of which upbringings you want your characters to be? I do. I already picked one. It's a hunter. That's, yeah. It's right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'll go ahead and put that in. Yeah, yeah. So that that gets one mental and three physical dots and uh, the path skills, athletics, range of combat, and survival. Um, and do I get both of these uh, these sort of perk like things yep. down here, uh, tracker and danger sense? Yep, you get both of them. And and just to be clear for my uh, for my uh, heritage path, was it was I picking only one of those uh, comfort food and collaborator, or was I picking? 
you got both of those as well. You'll, okay, you'll awesome. have four abilities at the end of character creation, and those will live with you for the rest of your character. Awesome. Uh, I actually have also already picked mine because I found one that works very well with my concept that I had in mind, which would be uh, Child of the World, which sort of gives you uh, mm, sort of uh, uh, supernatural traits akin to animals in a mm -hmm. sense. And since I was, uh, again, uh, reshaped by the sea or something at, uh, in that sense, I was thinking already since I was struck by a lightning and we we're talking joy RPGs, to probably have one of those uh, lightning scars that grows like uh, trees all across because you wouldn't, and you need to be noticeable in a JRPG sense to have your sprite look. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. That way. And so I think that having that going all over my body with some added uh, uh, shark fish traits yeah, since uh, cool. works cool. It yeah, yeah. Would be a nice combo like that. There's always a bit of a weirder character in there and uh, I'm thinking about my favorite uh, Joy RPGs and they tend to be my favorite so I'm uh, without even going that with the intentions I'm going with uh, that for my first at the gate characters as well sure yeah that sounds great uh, okay so then I have uh, one mantle which I put in resolve this time to even out a little bit things and then um, two physical I put another one in dexterity then I put one in uh, stamina and one social that this time I put in presence. Then I do have athletics, empathy and survival. I put uh, uh, two in empathy and one in survival in this sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I think that it's the one upbring child of the world is the one I'm bringing with two perks to which from you can select. Yes, uh, it's the only one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, I actually picked mov movement, mm -hmm. and that allows you to have uh, an enhanced form of movement that goes uh, in well with environments. Like enhanced movement allows you to, uh, well, in my case, swim, swim through water without suffering any complication. Yes. And unimpeded, uh, which allows me, if we are going that way, to uh, ignore uh, the underwater area effect, because of course. <laughs> Yeah. And for for people who aren't reading this, that's based on what kind of animal slash like weirdness that you choose to be. So because Michele chose like shark features, um, that is the benefit that having like fish shark type of features gives. Um, but we have, you know, like essentially if you're a flying creature or a something made out of stone or crystal or like something that can climb really well, uh, something that can jump really well, something that digs really well, any of those kind of things we have special things for. So even if you pick a animal like that you think is really cool that isn't represented here, there should be a movement style that fits that character type. Oh, yeah, and the other options which I didn't pick, but it's, I guess, for audience benefit, is sensory, which gives you a special sense uh, or mean of perception. Uh, yeah. But I figured that swimming would fit better. I don't know if y'all can hear my dogs freaking out in the background. I'm very sorry if you can. No. <laughs> All right. Um, Claire... Claire. We cannot hear you, Claire, at the moment. Are you muted? Nope, I still can't hear you. What about now? Oh, there you there are. There it is. Nope, there you are. All right, fantastic. Okay. Okay, so I actually already had mine picked out as well. <laughs> a lot of these, a lot of the uprings are pretty straightforward, and I feel like makes them pretty easy to slot in if you've got a concept figured out. Yeah. That's so why. I went with. <laughs> yes. I went with Defender. Okay. Um, it's all about how, you know, I grew up, I've been hammering this home already, but like she grew up in a hard environment with people who are martially focused. So she's known how to wield weapons and, you know, be, you know, that's been her, her whole life. Um, this gave her two mental, two physical attributes to play with. 
I increased her uh, intellect and cunning one more time. So, or not her intellect, her um, cunning and her resolve. So now she's got a cunning of three, resolve of two, still an intellect of one. We'll see how that changes later on. But for right now, she's not the sharpest tool in the, in the shed. Um, and for physical, I increased her uh, might and her. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, her might and her stamina. So that now she's got three might, two dexterity, and three stamina. Uh, a little more, a little more evened out, but she's definitely kind of got a more of a tanky build. Okay. Um, for skills, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just said okay. Yeah. <laughs> for skills, my options were close combat, ranged combat, and leadership, and I just decided to put one in each, um, since I missed out on ranged combat from uh, my heritage. Mm -hmm. Um. And the two advantages that I get, uh, one is warrior, warrior instincts. Uh, training has given me the ability to anticipate an attack before it comes, gain plus one enhancement that stacks to my initiative actions. And speaking of cooperative, uh, you know, cooperative mechanics, team tactics. Once a session, when coordinating combat actions with others, grant plus one advantage to the team's next action. Very excellent. You're you're going with warlord, aren't you? <laughs> uh, no, I'm going with warrior. Oh wow! Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, nice, nice. Okay, so I picked civil, and you know, I was trying to think like, oh, I'm a healer. Maybe I, you know, there's definitely more healer upbringings, but I decided that actually my character was kind of like, a like an in-house nurse. Uh, and her whole family was kind of like an in-house um, workers, like they were paid, they were whatever, um, housekeepers or whatever. But she, like, her, she took her nursing uh, and decided to like go become a diviner after that. Um, so that gives uh, being a civil worker uh, gives one mental, two physical, and one social, and the skills culture, empathy, and leadership. And so I increased my intellect to three, um, added, it brought both my might and my stamina to two. So now I have twos in all my physicals and I went ahead and brought my presence up to two as well. And then I picked up two dots in empathy because I feel like the nurse aspect is, is kind of the most important part of that. And then one part in culture or one point in culture, just because she grew up around cultured people and spent a lot of time around them that tends to rub off. Um, my perks though, or the perk abilities though, uh, are the things. <laughs> um, so I have killed them with kindness. Uh, I can deal with the world and all of its hostilities in a calm demeanor. Uh, when taking influence actions, I can purchase the shift attitude trick for one hit instead of two. And then additionally, once perception, once per session, if I fail an influence roll, I can reroll it without spending any momentum. Uh, and I also have out of place. Um, so I can tell when a social situation is outside of the like norms. So if somebody's acting weird in a social situation, I get an enhancement to understand the social in, in like whatever is socially going on and identify the expected behaviors and kind of notice that somebody's acting weird. So. And that, of course, that enhancement stacks. So that's upbringing. And now we get to profession. And the profession is kind of, so one of the things about Story Path Ultra is every, we have three paths, just like in Story Path, but we have essentially two minor paths and a major path. And so your upbringing and your heritage are your minor paths and some of the other story path ultra games will allow you to specifically choose which one you want to dig into more which one you want to um, make your major path but because we are really kind of uh, basing this along jrpg lines i wanted those to be more like here's your background and now here's your profession here's what you do um, and that's the main thing about your character so, you know, like in Final Fantasy Tactics or whatever, right? Like, this is your job. This is the, the thing that you are, uh, despite your 
you know, upbringing. So uh, this is a major path. So you're getting a lot more out of each of these paths. You're going to get 10 dots worth of attributes. You're going to get six dots worth of skills. And this is also where you're getting your magic from and your starting equipment. So let's dig into it. Uh, I think we all know what we're going to be. So um, MK, we'll start with you. I'm going to be a harrier, uh, essentially like sort of a rogue. Um, I think she's more of a spy type because she she doesn't really. Uh, I, I think she's sort of preparing for war with the with the Caparanite, and uh, she thinks that's what she's going to be uh, useful as, given her upbringing as a hunter. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, let's see. I'm going to have three mental, three physical, and four social to assign. So I'm bringing up my attributes. Um, right now I'm at two intellect, three cunning, two resolve, uh, physical, three might, five dexterities. She's real bendy. Uh, three stamina, stamina, and I'm at three presence, two manipulation, which may be not the best for a spy, but, you know, she doesn't have to be self-aware. And then four composure. Excellent. Um, let's see, I'm going to end up... How many dots do we have uh, to sink into these skills? Six. 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 So that's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going going to end up putting some in enigmas, uh, persuasion, and and quite a bit in athletics and larceny. I think. Okay. So and we said ten. Uh, how, you said six. So six, yeah, yeah, six of those. So I'm going to put two in athletics, two in larceny. I'm going to end up with persuasion at three and then enigmas at two. I'll just divide them. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, Harrier also gets a uh, rogue skyle, which is a starting art. And then you get to pick one more art, um, that from have, motion from motion yeah. okay i'll have to look at the arts that's fine and then while you're looking at the arts this is probably the longest is picking out the your special abilities so let's move on um with michele tell us about your mage Okay, I do uh, get, um, sorry, I'm scrolling upward, uh, five dots in mental, two in physical, and three in social. So at the end, I actually, uh, well, I, I try to be a little bit more rounded with this character because I, uh, I so I, in the end, I have intellect four, cunning three, and resolve four. I think that as a person who basically died and the resolve and the intellect uh, uh, could work well rather than cunning, which but free is still nice for a score. And then I rounded up uh, uh, my physical as well a little bit. I have might two, stamina two, and dexterity four. And going with what I said for mentals and the their personality, I think uh, that presence free, manipulation two, and composure free do work well on that side of things. Mm -hmm. I was more uh, or rather less balanced when it comes to skills because I pushed Esoterica up to five, just like that, just lots of magic going. Uh, a bit of Larceny because uh, sometimes uh, that helps. Yeah. Uh, uh, so Larceny 1, and uh, I uh, also raised no dots in technology, but I raised science to free, just to go with the knowledge of the nature, uh, that sort of stuff. Excellent. So balance on some things and less on others, but it's, it makes for fun dice pools to roll in the end, I think. Right. 
and um, you get... I have picked the other things okay, already. Sure. The art, if it's cool. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, well, I do have arcane mastery by default, and I just grabbed the power bolt because it's it's, it's cool. a classic there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> super cool. And, uh, well, I mentioned in the concept uh, that I didn't pick the spells yet, but I get to choose between Elementalism and Transformation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I mentioned, the idea of a sort of blaster controller with the elements works, yep. so Elementalism was yeah. an obvious choice there. Sounds good. Um, and you do get uh, an extra keystone outside of Elementalism, so you could pick up, like... Um, one of the more controly things out of, say, cognition or um, transformation, also. Oh, I'll have a look. Yeah. Right. You reminded me. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. And Claire. Okay. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I was going with the warrior profession. Um, so I, you know, again, I like my my melee focused fighter types. Um, so I get three mental dots, uh, five physical and two social. I'm going to go ahead and start with the social because that's not a lot of points. And I kind of already know what I want to do with that. Sure. And I decided to go with composure. I'm picturing her as very kind of stoic, doesn't talk a whole lot, but really good at not let. Well, not really good because it only brings her composure up to three. But, you know decent at not letting her emotions show on her face if she doesn't want them to. Sure, yeah. So very good kind of like a bodyguard-esque vibes that she's giving off. Uh, for mental, um, I raised each of them by one, so she's got an intellect of two, cunning of four, and a resolve of three. Uh, for physical, uh, rounded out Trying to round those those out to her might is at four, her dexterity is at three, and her stamina is at five. It's a very tough cookie to crack. All right. I'm pretty sure that's not the right way that the saying goes, but whatever. No, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, for skills, I wanted to make sure. I can only pick out specific ones, right? Right. Okay. So I added two to athletics, two to close combat, and one each to ranged combat and survival which brings her athletics up to two, close combat to four, range combat to two, and survival to one. Cool. And I wanted to double check that uh, there's no like limit on how high we can raise the skills at character creation, right? No. OK, good. Uh, I also already picked out her uh, arts, um, well, her art anyway, um, because she gets the art of might which comes for free with Battlemaster's prowess, which is that she go back to it. Battlemaster's prowess lets, lets her choose a favored weapon out of the ones she, that she owns. When she's using it, she gets an additional enhancement uh, to a maximum of four. And at the start of her turn, she chooses an enemy, she chooses an enemy within short range and that enemy gains the unique status effect challenged, which reminds me a heck of a lot of fighters from D and D fourth edition and marking things, and that makes me very happy. Did did I mention that this is also a little bit of a send up to fourth edition? <laughs> My favorite edition, hooray! Not yeah. not a year today. <laughs> okay, not here today. So I am now mentioning that. <laughs> <laughs> um, after looking over the other. Uh, art options, or not art options, but the other, um... Are they called arts individually? E or what are the, uh... The... Each individual art, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the point is I picked Brutal Bash, um, which is whenever I purchase any trick involving forced movement, such as shove or throw person, I move that target an additional range band. Very uh, cool. Yeah. That, and, that is and, also very DD, isn't it? It is very much. <laughs> and I also like, if it, if this would force the target into a hazard, area of effect, or other environmental damage, I increase the difficulty of, they have, it's harder for them to resist that too, by one. Cool. So if I just want to pick somebody up and throw them into a, you know, a shaft on a super weapon, it's harder for them to get out of that. 
Yes. Very excellent. Uh, and then your magic is transformation. I don't know if mm -hmm. you picked any spells yet. I'm still looking at those. That's so. fine. Um, how, how many spells do I, we get? I believe, Just one of them? Or... I believe we get three to start. Uh, yep. Choose three spells. And they can, they essentially can come from anywhere within the pillar. You pick one of the blocks of four spells to be your keystone. And keystones just lets you cast it again by spending some of your energy. So I will explain spells while y'all are looking. Spells have three different um, keywords attached to them. Uh, they either happen instantly, so they are called dynamic, uh, which means that you can just keep casting them. There's no cooldown on how often you can cast them. Uh, they are uh, elevated, which means you can cast them once a scene. Uh, once you've cast it for the scene, it's essentially on cooldown until the next scene. You can spend energy to take it off of cooldown. Um, and, and that's for all spells. And then there is, um, dang it, what's the other word? Because I've gone through a whole bunch of words. Uh, iconic? Iconic. Iconics happen once per session. And again, you can spend energy to take that off of cooldown and, and use it again. And you only have so much energy to use each session. Um, you can get energy back throughout the session, but you have to do some kind of, uh, some kind of communing with the world around you so that you can kind of replenish your, your, your soul essentially, because your, your magic comes from the world that you're in. Uh, and your keystone allows you to refresh any of your cooldowns like once per once one of the spells of your keystone each per session you can put off of cooldown for free so i don't know if that made sense essentially you've got four spells if you know all four of them you could refresh each one of them for free because they're your keystone um so for you michaela you get access okay. to a, like just four spells from another pillar. So you can pick those up at character creation if you want to. And if you cast them and want to take them off of cooldown, once per session, you could take it off of cooldown for free because it's a keystone, an additional keystone. Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, I probably am wrong here because I'm learning things. Uh, I could uh, pick uh, creation as my keystone. Mm-hmm. And so destruction because I get an extra one. You could absolutely. Okay, and within there uh, I could pick uh, like uh, uh, free spells. So say I pick uh, air, water, and lightning. That would work as spell. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm doing things right. Okay, yep. doing it right. <laughs> I get RPG books, wouldn't we? Yay! <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and tell you about my little diviner while y'all are looking at spells and everything. Um, I get uh, four mental, two physical, and four social. Uh, so I've brought my intellect to four, my cunning to three, and my resolve to three. And then I have brought my uh, might to two, my dexterity to three, and my stamina to three. So I'm a little... I'm a little weakling, but I'm not completely defenseless. And then for socials, I've brought my presence up to four. Uh, my manipulation's at two. I'm not really good at manipulating people. Uh, and my composure's at three. So uh, I get the arts. Uh, my basic art is, oh, sorry, my skills. I forgot to talk about those. Um, I get esoterica. Uh, that's kind of the basic like casting attack skill. Um, I get empathy, which I already have. I get medicine and I get persuasion, which I already have. Esoterica, I've brought to three because again, that's kind of the general magic attack skill and I want to have some capability in it. Um, cause when I'm not like casting a spell or doing something else, I'm, uh, I want to be able to pew pew people with my wand. Um, and then... Uh, I went ahead and got medicine at two 
And I also uh, went ahead and just brought my empathy up to two. So now um, I have arts. My basic art is Restore the Soul, which just is a, a basic heal. So even if I didn't pick up the healing spells, all diviners have a basic heal as an art that they can do. And then I picked up Divine Insight, which just gives me some information. Uh, it's an inf like a question asker ability. Uh, for spells, I pick my keystone as life. So of course, my he the heal spell. Uh, and also I picked up naturalize, sorry, not naturalize, purify, uh, which allows me to clear uh, area effects and uh, downgrade their effectiveness. So I can kind of help purify an area. And then I also picked shield, which allows me to create barriers and help my friends um, not get as hurt. So all of the, the fun healy white mage kind of things that you would expect uh, from a video game. Okay. So when we pick a pillar, do we get all of the things within it or do we choose the, the I'm, I'm, so I'm going to be the noob. Nope, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, your pillar defines which spells you have access to. Awesome. You pick a keystone, which any spell that you wind up learning from your keystone has that essentially once free uh, refresh on it. And you but you can learn your three starter spells from any of the 12 available within like within cognition pillar. yeah within cognition. okay within my okay so the the keystone is is going to be like uh the pillar of, or the 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 keywords or the the so the your so your pillar is cognition the block is yeah. animus ephemera and thought and okay yes yeah, so i'm going to... you can pick one of those three as your keystone okay yeah i'm picking the pillar of thought as my keystone got it okay and then i'm gonna pick uh the the, the spells within my my keystone or but In, we're... any of the spells within the pillar of cognition you can pick up okay okay awesome okay and i can have three of those yes okay got it thank you mm -hmm. i believe i've picked mine as well sure um so i have access to the pillar of transformation as a warrior yes uh for my keystone i picked perfection of course and then for my individual spells uh the two i picked from perfection were empower and reinforce perfect um let me pull that back up so empower lets me pick speed power social or mental uh and i gain plus one advantage on the next action i take uh that would take advantage of the one i pick uh it lasts until the end of the scene it's an elevated spell um i assume i can only use it one time but yep. if i don't use it it you know it just boils away into the ephemera right um and then reinforce uh, I target a single item within short range. That item is now immune to all mundane attempts to break or destroy it for the rest of the scene, and it's iconic. Yeah. So I'm like, you won't break this door, or, you know, this sword, or whatever. Whatever I don't want people to break, they won't break it. Which is really great, because lots of monsters have the ability to break your weapons. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, the uh, what my third spell is Frey. Target a single mundane object within close range. The object is immediately broken. Uh, if it is used on an object held or worn by another character, the caster must make a magical attack action to target it. Right. Um, uh, and then finally, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. And then finally, shape change. Uh, another iconic. I'm pretty sure Frey is also iconic. Nope, Frey is elevated, so I can break things more often than I keep things from breaking. But shape change is iconic. Um, Oh, but you only get three spells. Oh, for some reason. I've, oh, Keystone plus three spells. Yeah. My bad. No, okay, great. Cool. Shape uh, change is I awesome, will... though, and definitely worth going for. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like Frey partly partly because I have been playing uh, some JRPGs of late, and part of the reason I made the character the direction I did is because I really like, uh, like in Final Fantasy, they call it the, the break 
skill mm -hmm. where it's sort of like you target somebody and you break like their armor or their magical defense or their whatever yes and so i like Frey. it's very kind of based you know it's very core central to the character idea yeah. that i wanted yeah, so very cool. can you pick up more spells later yes absolutely okay so i will pick up shape change at a later date if that is what i decide to do sure cool all right and then uh the last thing that your profession gives you is starting gear and just really quickly uh, go over some, how the starting gear works is it's going, you get everything in the list of starting gear. So for me as a diviner, I get a cloth armor, which is just, I have an armor, all armor grants one armor point at base, and then it has the tag concealable on it that is described in the starting equipment. Then I get to choose either a divine focus or a dagger with two tags. So I get to make that up myself and then i get a first aid kit which there's an equipment list that tells me what a first aid kit does um and then uh oops, that is not what i wanted uh and then we will uh and so that's it you just you get those things so for my focus i'm just gonna make it uh a focus is essentially the weapon that you use for magic attacks just like a sword is used for physical attacks or a bow you use for ranged attacks magic attacks are um uh, at, at a shorter range than like a bow would be i think it's at like short range uh you make an attack but you make it with esoterica instead of ranged attack um so I'm just going to quickly pick some tags and I'm going to pick uh, that it, it has increased range because um, otherwise it's kind of short. Um, and I'm going to give it the ability to stun people. So I'm going to give it increased range and stun on a focus and that's that's my gear now does a bow naturally come with 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 long range as a thing or do you need to add that as a tag so the range on a bow starts at uh at medium without mm -hmm. any special tags and then if you want it to go out to long you'll need increased range okay so i think i'll probably just go with piercing and probably brutal Okay. Because so I don't need it to be too long range. I just, I need it to hit hard, yep. I think. That makes sense. I think that I'm going to go with uh, increased range myself. And so since we're still going for that uh, storm water thing, I'll go with electrified. Nice. Which is nice because that combos with uh, if the car the target is in water and they do pick water among my elemental things as well. So I think that I can do some shenanigans then eventually, if not right from the start. Yeah, very cool. Clear. Okay, so I'm looking over the tags. So the warrior gets plate or leather armor with two tags, a weapon with two tags, or a weapon and a shield with, with each one tag, and hunter's traps. Um, so I've been looking at the weapon tags, and so far I'm a really big fan of heavy weapon. Mm -hmm. It's just a huge, huge piece of metal that can barely be called a sword, uh, in my case. Um, and this says this counts as two tags when applied to a weapon, so... That's it. <laughs> that's it. That yep. makes it very easy. Yep. Um and then for armor, I think I'm going to go with uh, plate armor because that's always really cool looking. Mm -hmm. I always really like it. Um, I like the idea of resistant to... Um, it just says spells in general, so I assume it's not like a specific type of... Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's okay because I'll take resistant magical and elemental, uh, in this case, ice, because I like the... Uh, you know. Um, Leaning into that, my re my origin of the the cold mountainous north, and All so right. this has to go with ice. I don't know if I said that already. Yeah. Um, so I'm protected from any status effect associated with that element. Very cool. 
and I'm going to go with light armor, just basic sort of rogue kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and I get one enhancement, uh, one, uh, uh, an enhancement to defensive actions. Very cool. Always good. All right. Um, the next thing we would do is add some little like touch up stuff. You would get four additional dots to apply to skills, to round out your skills. Uh, you can pick up some non-path skills this way. Uh, you could also get, essentially you get three contacts and those contacts can come from your upbringing, your heritage and your um, profession. And you can spin the dots any way you like. And the way that that works is each dot counts as an enhancement whenever you um, interact with them or ask them to do a thing and also gives you a tag, which is an area of influence that they're useful in. Um, you have to choose three contacts. You can't put five dots into one contact. So it's going to be like two, two, one or three, one, one or something like that. Um, uh, and then your soul echelon will be set to one. And then we would create character bonds. And then at the very, very end, we would determine our short and long-term aspirations. Unfortunately, Claire has to leave. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think that I would love to set up the bonds. Um, but I also don't want to do that without Claire because I feel like that's a little weird to do um, yeah so I what I'll say instead is um, because this will go on YouTube and you will see uh, this kind of being promoted maybe a little bit maybe I'll record another one during the crowd funder because this one had so many technical issues <laughs> um, but, yeah, and I'll come. I'll I'll happily come and yeah, do this. Yeah, and and we'll yeah, you know, we'll I'll do the actually show thing. up for a second one too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, but if you are watching this before the crowdfunder, before we do another one, and you're like, well, how did the skill dots go, or how did the character bonds go? Um, these characters are going to show up in the ash can. Uh, so when the ash can comes out, if you pick that up, you will see these completed characters in the ash can. So you can see how they end up being rounded out. <laughs> right. So otherwise, I think that's going to be it for us. And I know that that's kind of like, it's been a little weird. Uh, I super apologize for all of the technical issues we've had because it's been a day, a month, a year. I <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so uh, thank you all who are watching. Uh, thank everybody who um, watches in the future and thank, thank you for the folks who showed up and resubscribed to the channel. That's always very nice of you. Uh, we had Hot Dog Wizard resubscribe. Um, and so did we have uh, Nicholas uh, resubscribe. So those, those are always super helpful to us. Uh, otherwise, Hi, Nicholas. yes, uh, otherwise, thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Claire and Michaela and MK for coming on with me today to do this honestly kind of last minute decision that I made <laughs> uh, to do this. So I really appreciate everybody uh, sitting in and hanging with us. And if you enjoyed it, please spread the word. This could be going to crowdfunders this year. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when, but it will be this year. So uh, please look forward to it. And I am going with that. I'm going to sign off and tell everyone goodbye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.